Hey everyone, this is Roberto Amadeo Martocci. Welcome to Pep Talks, the Ministry of the Diamond Lights Personal Empowerment Podcast. Um, what we do here is, well, it's really a place where we bring unique perspectives on spirituality, on mysticism, on spiritualism, um, ancient wisdom, and sacred knowledge. And how we can apply these things in a practical way to enhance our lives. So this evening, I'd like to bring to you a very special guest with a very unique perspective in the science of psychic work and let him share with us his many years of research and experience in bioenergy informatics, which I will have him explain, and how he's able to gain insight into the state of a person's bioenergy system um, with a rare technology that can demonstrate how information in the bioenergy field can determine how our environment impacts our physical health. So before our conversation begins, I wish to tell you a little bit more about um, Vladimir. He's our special guest, um, Vladimir Karanow. So he was born in Ukraine um, and is a psychic scientist, like I said. Um, he has a master's degree in psychology. He's a certified professional in an advanced bioenergy diagnostic technology named Crystal. He is also a psychic, a medium, and a trans channel. Oh, and also he's, a, he's an expert intuitive oracle tarot reader. So he uses um, both science and his empathic intuitive psychic mediumship side um, in tandem together um, to work with people, advise people, and to help them in their healing process and to help them understand what's going on within them. So he's worked with thousands of clients from all around the world and is now a citizen of the United States um, and bringing his extensive research and unique skills with him. He also happens to speak three languages fluently, um, Ukrainian, because he's from Ukraine, Russian, and English, and he works in all three of these languages seamlessly. Oh, and by the way, he's also an integral part of the work we do here at Ministry of the Diamond Light, um, where we bring science, technology, mysticism together for personal empowerment, and of course, healing. So thank you, Vladimir, um, for being here with us today. Um, is there anything before we begin you'd like to say? Hello, Roberto. Hello, everyone. Thank you very much, Roberto, for inviting me for your podcast. Uh, it's a big honor. And uh, uh, let's start with our conversation. And I will explain what the psychic science mean and uh, how important it is uh, in uh, healing and um, our spiritual growth. Yes, thank you. And thank you so much for taking the time to be here um, and explain this because I I know I know all about your work because we work together. Um, however, I would be less likely to explain it um, well enough for people to really understand where you're coming from. So my first question is, um, you know, you're a psychic scientist and a psychic medium. So how did you actually get into this this work? Was it something you were born with? Is it something that you, you had to be taught? So when I was a small uh, kid, I started to create my first altar. I didn't actually know what I was doing because I uh, just was doing it like uh, intuitively. I uh, and I felt myself very different from the kids because I had a completely different interests. So I was very into uh, crystals, into uh, herbs, into some kind of... Um, I was very always close to nature. That's what I would say. And um, I was able to feel the energies, but I wasn't aware about that until this certain time. And... Uh, I just started to learn about the world uh, from my uh, inner feeling that I was getting from the old um, uh, environment near me, you know, and um, 
I was very attracted to the certain type of books. So uh, mostly it started when I was uh, very strongly started when I was like uh, eight or nine years old. I was able to feel the energies from the books uh, with a certain knowledge that I wanted to gain. So how does how does that like how was that like you, you said you um, you felt you felt in some way the books were they calling to you um, did you just see them on the shelf or did you have some kind of guidance that led you there like how, how did that work for you I was going to the certain shops and I was basically feeling the energies from the certain books so I was like basically attracted to them and I started to uh, collect my library about first it was astrology and uh, magic and then uh, it was more advanced about the um, bioenergy and uh, aura I was very interested in this topic and uh, probably I was uh, remembering something from my past life in that moment about the auras and uh, I found a magazine at my grandfather's um, a library uh, it was called uh, science and life yes and this uh, magazine had an article about the Kirlian effect Kirlian about um, aura photography that was uh, developed uh, in Russia by Simeon Kirlian first time and uh, that actually uh, demonstrate us the mm, one of the etheric fields so before that I'm, well, okay probably not before that you you never heard of it but, I've never um, heard of it yes um, but like you were saying like it would age eight or nine is very young so it's like you started your your research as as a kid yes. so you've always always kind of a scientist um searching for answers and just kind of following your your gut i'll call it your intuition um yes. the books uh, were calling to you energetically and you just went with it so you and knew i wanted to educate myself also you know because those interests they were like totally different and when the kids were playing different toys, I wasn't into that, you know, I was in a completely different world. And this world started to open for me even stronger because I took my first uh, regular playing cards deck in the hands, you know, and I felt it like it was a very powerful instrument uh, to like focus on myself on that and uh, get some information for the people so so you're saying you know you were talking about the past lives again and i wanted to address that because um it seems like what you're saying and i've experienced myself it's like you as a kid i had similar very different experiences but a similar path as a very young kid of like actually five years old i was very aware um but it's it's like you carry. It's like you carried your past lives, information from your past lives with you. So, would you say that when when a book called to you or some research, like you were pointed in a direction and you saw it, it was like you were remembering? I believe that we come into this world with a mission. Uh, all of us are on this planet to uh, do something important. Uh, I would say even uh, like we should follow our own way uh, to the individual harmony. I think that that's what was the calling and uh, psychic work, uh, energy healing work and uh, mediumship or channeling. It's one of the highest levels of the um, sp uh, spiritual work, you know, on this planet because it's basically uh, can help to people find their own paths and follow their paths, paths and uh, that's uh, very important, very important. Okay, well, you know, 
for me, it just feels really important. Like, like what you're saying is like mediums, someone that channels like people that are in magical practice or shamans, like all of this high um, frequency, I'll call it work. Um, like, what, like, what do you think the purpose of it? It's like, is it for me? It, feel, it feels like it's like help shepherding other people in their own awakening for their own empowerment. So, what's your take on that? I think that there is a divine uh, creator, and uh, we always uh, been guided by the divine creator through the healers that work with the. Uh, through the mediumship uh, with the ancestors and spirit guides angels different deities and uh, also ascended masters and uh, it's very important uh, to for psychic to develop uh, your own skills you know and um, what i would say that uh, it's also very important that uh, the psychic uh, will learn more about himself and what is the, one of the most uh, 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 serious ways to learn it's a science so that was my calling to bring the science into the spirituality that's one that's you know that's wonderful it's, i'm you know you know i'm a fan of your work so <laughs> i've experienced your readings i've experienced you know the bioenergy diagnostic testing and um it's really like to me i'm all about evidence and one of my mentors is always like always you know, bring the receipts you gotta you know belief is something that you have to i feel you have to experience things for yourself understand things um before you can act yourself before you can actually believe them and i think it's important um work that you're doing um, by showing people what they can't see so that it's not it's not just oh well you know there's there's a channel or a medium or a psychic that's advising me and all the information lines up and and it's really helpful but it's kind of also like you know where's the proof so I feel like evidence I feel like and I experienced that in your readings so you give you give a lot of evidence and the practical results also because when i bring the messages to my clients and the people who need the healing it's uh, most of the time can be life-changing moment yeah so you, you said something before you were talking about psychics and and then ascended masters and and other things so i kind of wanted to make a little bit of a distinction with um it's like psychic work is a certain type of informational work i'll say that and mediumship is i guess informational work too but you're getting that from you're connecting to a higher level or a higher frequency and you're either a channel for that for that um spirit or that you were saying angels guides um ascended masters so, you know, a medium usually is also does psychic work and is a psychic, but people that do psychic work aren't necessarily called to be mediums. And I think like that's something that that always needs to, I guess, you know, to let people know. So tell me, like, share your perspective on that, because people talk about this a lot. So with my perspective that we all have uh, uh, the sixth sense and also uh, more higher senses and uh, I would say intuition probably a uh, sixth sense and uh, other senses that we call the psychic work and um, mediumship. The psychic work, we all are born with that kind of ability. Like your intuition you're talking about yes i believe that um, there are some uh, mediums that they are psychics that they are sent to this planet with their specific mission and um, a lot of psychics they get information from the client 
they can get the information about the past events and also they can predict and prognose certain events in the future. But when you work as a medium, you connect to the, uh, I would say, uh, the deceased uh, parents and also the spirits that uh, lived here uh, in the old ages and you can work with different spirits. But uh, when you work as a medium or a channeler, even the channeler, you are even in on a higher level. Basically, here you are instrument of the divine creator will. So um, it's also um, so I see like there are different levels, uh, and I I think that there are different levels and uh, from my experience and the all healers um, and the psychics they are very important on this planet and uh, as more we know about this uh, science of the psychics and uh, uh, intuitive and mediumship and channeling as more we will bring uh, clarity you know and evidence and we will be able to show to the people that it's very important and uh, um, it's one of the oldest uh, science in general like the magic you know in ancient very very ancient times like even before egypt and you know i'm studying with with someone right now about samaria um it's like that was always there and somewhere the information got drowned out. I'll, I'll call it that. I'll, I'll be kind about it. Um, and I think that, like I was saying, this work is really important um, because it's helping people open back up to that. And all the programming of this is, this is hoo-ha, I'll, call, I'll say. <laughs> you know, this is BS um, gets programmed into people and then they they stop believing that it's a possibility. So I think this work shows the evidence and makes people remember, like who they really are and what their their power is. Even you know if it's just your intuition helping you in your life, or if you're, you know, you were called. Your mission is is to be an advisor and a you know a medium and a guide. So you were talking about the. Um, like psychic tuning into the client themselves did you did you mean their bioenergy field and the information that's in there you're tuning directly yes they have them? they have the ability to feel the energies uh i would say it's um uh, uh, micro lepton waves it's uh it was a research uh by the scientist a uh, very uh, serious scientist that I am actually doing research right now on his work. So he uh, he uh, did a research and he investigated that there are different types of waves, like the you know the heat heat wave, the light wave. That everything has the wave structure, like the sound frequency, basically. And that's all can transmit the molecules of spirit, the micro leptons. So, um, so he's saying, psychic, oh, is, go ahead, go ahead, is, yes, psychic is tuning into the uh, person's field uh, and uh, getting this information, those micro leptons, and uh, basically it's like the mirror that you can see the past events and uh, the person's qualities and uh, it's all in our aura so basically okay. this aura is created by those micro leptons okay so like just to like kind of summarize for people um are you saying in a way <laughs> that a person like the spiritual molecules which you're calling micro leptons which yes. the scientist is able to measure and visibly see with uh with technology um is a frequency 
that they are is in the transmitting field. the information that's in a person's bioenergy field and we're doing that to each other so we're transmitting and receiving and certain people that train and have trained or are open to this um, kind of work can actually perceive this information. Yes, Roberto, you're absolutely right. That's how it is. Okay, so that's the nature. That's like kind of like a scientific way of yes. you know describing the nature of psychic work. And uh, and uh, it's, it's molecules of the spirit. So that's very very unique uh, information that I received by channeling. So I was able to uh, found this tech one of the technologies that I'm using in my practice also through the channeling. Like uh, there is uh, psychic research of the scientist on this topic about the molecules of the spirit I also got through channeling. Mm -hmm. Okay, that, that's like, I never thought of it that way. <laughs> so I'm glad we're having this conversation, you know, because as they're listening, it's like we're discovering, or I'm discovering as well. Um, so what I also wanted to ask and talk about was with that being the case, and you have a, this technology called Crystal, um, can you can you explain that a little bit to everybody? You know, what it what it actually is doing and how it how it's able to I don't even know what the word is, but um, diagnose or sense like the, the technology is reading this information that's on the frequency that's in somebody's field. So how is this technology doing that? So uh, this is a unique technology uh, named Crystal because it shows a different uh, facets of the uh, person uh, on a different levels on a physiological level on the level of the energy and the information so this technology was de developed by a very uh, talented uh, scientist alexander uh, strelnikov uh, and um, basically this technology uh, using specific device that taking the measurements of the certain bioactive points on the hand and it's analyzing uh, the flow of the energy in your uh, whole uh, energy meridian system how it's connected to the main energy centers we also can name them chakras and um, we basically can see uh, how our centers are working uh, in what kind of state they are, are they in uh, balance or in uh, disharmony, and uh, are there any uh, like uh, blockages on them. So each energy center uh, creates a certain frequency, and those frequencies mm, we also can, um, I would say, uh, 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 decode or transcode I don't know the right word for that into the certain notes and we are able to listen to the music of the spirit because our aura it's a uh, part of our spirit spiritual uh, plane I would say individual spiritual plane so uh, we can hear the music of uh, our spirit that's a very unique and it's first uh, technology that ever been developed. Wow. So and also, and also wow. this technology shows uh, in a, a 3D model, uh, bioenergy field, uh, the mat matrix field of the of aura. Uh, for each energy center creates the certain frequency that also transferred into the color and when all colors are mixing together they create those this specific color on the aura so it also gives a representation of like the energy centers separately as well as a composite yes. of what it, what it looks like yes. for all and you know i've i've seen the <laughs> I've seen it. You've tested me. I've seen the technology. We work. We work with this technology. So um, there's. I wanted you to to talk just a little bit about 
you, you call it a deformation in the energy field based on certain blockages. And like, can you kind of explain like what environmental things would cause that in a person's life and what they're experiencing on a mental level, emotional level, et cetera, um, and how this technology is able to show this and what it, like, what it tells you, it's, it's diagnosing. So this uh, technology created, uh, basically it's focusing uh, the person on a way of individual harmony, to follow the individual harmony. And uh, I, I think that uh, all the events in life, they happen for the reason. And when uh, we uh, get in the influence with a certain type of information that affect us, creating the stress and creating the blockages in different zones or in our and bioenergy field, uh, it's some kind of lessons lessons that we are getting that we need to go through those kind of situations and to get the uh, life lesson from that and um, when you work uh, with a medium or with a healer or with a psychic and then they can also help to clear those blockages they can help bringing you the important information and uh, this information can be uh, like can clear the blockages because this is the one of the highest levels of the work. It's not just uh, energy healing; it's a uh, healing with information that comes from the uh, divine, from the astral plane, uh, from the spirit. So, uh, and we also can um, test the the person again. And to see how uh, the bioenergy field changed and how uh, the healing procedure uh, helped the person so yes. that's a very unique yeah i love that about it like you know you have the before and after so you know intuitively you know i or you we would tune in and or a healer would tune in and the just so you know, people might not know like some of the terminology that we're using. A lot of people know what chakras are, but they might not understand that that because um, it's not talked about that much. That in Chinese medicine you have a meridian system, and there's points on your hand, just points all over your body. But you're you're like reading the the energy, the equality and the quantity of the energy that's you know at these points it's running through your meridian system and your meridians in certain combinations like bundle at like your heart so, so what's it's almost like an energetic nervous system and that becomes a chakra that's like what a chakra is what's interesting that actually kirlian technology that i mentioned was able to show those kind of energy uh, channels that they were going through the skin in a certain zones and those bioactive from those bioactive points that been known for for centuries, you know. Yeah, so it's not as you know, it's not it's it's not a new thing, but the technology is is actually really very new, you know, advanced yeah. at at um, at basically reading that information. That's a system that you know that you wouldn't you wouldn't normally see, like in the brilliant photography, you know. You see a light emitting from the points, from these points in the hands. I think that's what you were referring to. Yes. Yes. You showed me that. You showed me that once. Um, what else was I going to ask you about this? Um, it's a lot. So we're, you know, I think that, um, I think like things are evolving. <laughs> You know, like things are evolving. Like there's, there's, you know, the unseen, the esoteric, the mystical, the healers. That way, you're saying psychics, mediums, they they work in a certain way, but they're actually kind of working similarly to like what this technology can actually pick up. So, so like for instance, um, like like it. I mean, to be practical, it's like you know, what you were saying about the 
people, you know, bringing information to people. So there's blockages, and you're bringing this information as a, as a psychic, as a as a psychotherapist, as whatever modality of of healing, you know. It's like there's something's blocked there, like an emotion, a trauma is something is there in the energetic field, and when you have this kind of advising or tuning in and this information is brought to your awareness it's not in your subconscious anymore like hidden it's brought to your awareness that's what allows you to actually clear clear that blockage and energy and the technology you know when you do the after it shows you what was blocked and, and what was i mean after what was relieved <laughs> or what was released and then what you know people process things differently it allows the person to process this information and then um that's like a big important part of the healing. also through the message when the medium or channel bringing the message he's bringing also the certain uh kind of frequencies through his voice and uh, i experienced as uh, one of my mentors uh she was speaking the ancient languages so it's very unique and uh, uh, it might also be helpful for in a healing process you know so that's very incredible that we can use uh, also the sound and wave and the healing of the sound uh, to uh, bring those uh, messages uh, from the spirit plane that we actually can decode because every sound every healing sound from the crystal balls is also bringing certain message for our body for our chakras but on a, a language of the frequency because it's also the language yes and your body whether you're conscious of it or not your body is is harmonizing with that and responding to that and that's what you know crystal sound balls it can they're very they can be very healing relaxing relieve stress like it helps in meditations and journeys and you know it helps it helps with healing it helps people get out of their mind you know thinking mind into a different brain state so that then they can release more and become aware of more and process more um so yeah i i very much enjoy speaking speaking with you about this um there's you know we talked a, a lot about you know this stuff but i want to kind of connect back to to you <laughs> um and the other the other things you do with the oracle readings and the mediumship and i know we were explaining you know the process of how you know the information and psychic work and where it all comes from and spirit and all of that um but we really didn't talk that much about how you actually like you can how how you personally because different mediums or psychics do different do things differently how do you process i mean how do you receive the information and then like what is basically like what's your process and what does your you know oracle tarot readings or mediumship readings or sessions i'll call them are like like how does it work for you so for me it's very important uh, to uh, connect to the energy of the person so first i work uh, as a psychic so i start to get the feeling of the energy of the person and this energy is bringing me the information so this information it's also the micro lectons that i explained before uh, this information uh, can get stronger if i use different tools so a lot of psychics and mediums they use different tools as an anchor so for example i have this uh, oracle cards so they work as an anchor when you use the cards uh, you bring in the message from the spirit uh, to your client and when the person uh, actually see the message like uh, 
for example, where sentience. When uh, the client see the message, uh, the connection between me, the client, and the spirit becomes stronger. And uh, this mediumship goes on a much higher level. And the link become more stable. So uh, also the client allows himself to experience the healing from the spirits from me. So uh, difference between the psychics and the mediums, as I explained before, the psychics, they get in the information from the client, but um, they not always working with the spirit. Okay, so there's two, there's two things going on there for you. So you're, you're working with the cards and you're getting information, you're saying from, from spirit as well through the cards. The cards acts as an anchor yes. for, between you and the you, okay. spirit and the client. And they also they also uh, hold the molecules of the spirit. They what what is the object that holds molecule of the spirit? It's magic object. That's what it becomes after many years of work with the oracle uh, decks. So they get charged. Yes, let's say they get charged. Well, that's my way of <laughs> yes. simplifying it. You know, for for people. Um, it's like that information is coming through from spirit and that energy and you know through the reading and through you um and his connection to what's the- in the cards yes also when i'm uh feeling sensing i can also get the visuals of the certain events in life of the person uh I can, uh, if I'm going, if I'm putting myself more deeper into the trance uh, state of mind, I can uh, also visualize, I can see uh, visuals of the different uh, uh, life events or people. I actually uh, develop those abilities uh, and I um, I didn't have them uh, such a, in such a strong way uh, before as I have them now. I see. So, <clears throat> um, you know, that just reminds me. It's like it's always an ongoing process. And that's what I love about you. It's like you always research. You always move forward. You always think about. You rethink. You True. prove to yourself. You make, you know, connections and you evolve in your work. Um, and I think that's really important for all people that are, you know, medium psychics or doing any work like this is, you know, you never just arrive, (laughs) you don't, you don't arrive there and then you're done. It's like, you have to continually do the work and study and do your practices and your spiritual practices so that you can, you can stay in those energies. You have to, um, condition your body to be able to hold those energies without getting exhausted um so yeah self-care is really important as well as a psychic and a medium um so So i use i use those tools i use a card decks i try to use a different uh, like oracle systems Uh, some people use the bones or the stones Uh, or runes, yes, mm. um, yes. But the most, uh, I think you coffee grinds, like they do different. As you develop yourself, you can also create your own deck or your own tool, you know, with experience, and it will work with you, uh, like on a very high level, because it will have your own, you know, way to do a reading and uh, bring the information. Yeah, and something just popped in, you know, it must be, you know, my guidance saying it's like, you know, I do, I do all of the spiritual work too. I do readings, I, you know, I'm a medium and channel and, and, you know, I do this work as well. And it's just, it's, I would say it's, it's like, it comes more freely and easily to me now, but I feel like it's, you know, just as a person being a medium and all of that it's like 
and you're talking to spirit it's like you have to let you have to you you have to pull yourself and your mind and your ego and like everything out so that spirit can can speak more clearly through you the message is not yours <laughs> you're just you're just in in between you're just you know the messenger and i feel like um I was gonna say, <laughs> I really, um, I'll, I'll get it. I, I promise. Um, yeah, it's it's gone. If it's meant to come back, it will come back. But from what I was saying, like, what do you what do you have to say about that? If you can understand any of what I just said, um, I think that the, if you allow yourself uh, to trust the spirit yes to trust yourself it's very important to trust yeah. the spirit first that's what i was getting out now you just reminded me it's it, you know it takes <laughs> it takes so much trust and belief because you don't know what the message is before the person comes necessarily um sometimes you can tune in and before but but it's like you don't know what's going to happen you don't know if it's going to happen so I wanted to talk to you about that as, you know, a working medium tarot like reader and from your experience, like, you know, sometimes the messages are hard to harder to get than others, depending on the person that you're sitting for. So what's some of the reasoning for that? Because I, you know, this is for people that receive readings, but it's also for people that work psychically and stuff like that, that might get a little bit down when they just, oh, that was a crap reading. It's like I wasn't getting I wasn't getting much or I was I was getting little little things but it, I just couldn't get a clear you know thing and you, that's that's, you know, stop trusting mm -hmm. as as trusting because you never know like what you're gonna get how much you're gonna get so one of the reasons why um, it's hard sometimes to work with a certain people uh, in the my own uh, perspective it looks that when you work with a spirit it's very important that uh, it should be uh, work of the spirit work of the medium and work of the client only this brings success in a healing so when the medium brings bring the message and certain people, they don't want to leave their comfort zone. You know, uh, they don't want to change something in their life. They're not ready. They, they're not ready to hear the message. Yes. Yes. And when you just start, they already feel the energy of the message. They may be not yet aware about the message, but through the vibration of the voice, they already hear it and they just refuse to accept this message. Yeah, and when you say that, it's like, <clears throat> I feel like you're also saying, it's like, it could be a subconscious thing that's going on as well. It's not like, you know, people just like, oh, I don't want to hear that. I don't like what you just said. It's, they it's not more... allowing, they're not allowing uh, themselves to uh, receive oh. the healing for the different reasons they can be blocked they can uh, have they just uh, their own will like don't be don't uh, they want to hear what they want to hear versus what they might need to hear what they need to hear yes yeah i mean this is why i think like evidence is really important because because skepticism which people helps everybody... with trust yeah. evidence helps with trust Yes. And skepticism, like healthy skepticism is, it should be a part of the whole process. Right. Okay. You shouldn't just take everything at, you know, face value. Um, you need, you need some evidence that shows you that this message is coming from my grandmother because the person that's doing the reading for me has given me evidence. They don't know me. They don't know anything about me and they told me the color of my grandmother's dress that she always wore and she never wore any other color it's like how would somebody know that or something extremely personal um in their personal connection with that person comes up it could be you know an item that was whole dear it could have been a gift it could have been something so as you build that evidence 
um, then the the reading can then the person can settle in and then be like okay I can be more open to this reading because I can trust um, because I'm getting all of this evidence that this message is coming from the place I think it's coming from and I wanted to on that I wanted to talk about the Arthur Finley College of it's college in England of they've been doing this for centuries I don't know they've been doing it for for a very long time it's a very um, big institution in England um, where they train some of the leading you know well-known medium psychics and channels and and different things and in the the English it's spiritualist it's like a spiritualist church um, which basically spiritualism is everything we're talking about it's like mediumship psychic work magic sh shamanism magic quantum physics really it's like channeling energies um, of the elements of different things getting information from higher frequencies like speaking with that information um, that's spiritualism and spiritualists are very much about providing evidence to themselves as well as the people that they work with so you know I I, I was there you were at the Arthur Finley College for this intensive evidential mediumship you know program and the reason I'm bringing it up is because of the evidence we were with a lot of people there was a lot of evidence you know that comes up to build that trust so that then then the healing can happen the people the per, you know that's what that's what it's all for it's all it's all for healing um spirituals they also do energy healing work so you know the ministry of the diamond light is we're, we're a lot of things because you know that's more of an old school um way of looking at um mediumship and this kind of work like like very evidence evidence based they don't they unless somebody is modifying it they don't usually talk about like guys it's all about you know loved ones in spirit and they they you know validate the existence of guides and masters and angels and all of that other stuff they just in in that older spirit, spirit, spiritualist perspective they don't work with those or they don't talk about <laughs> working with those i believe they do work with those also because we've met so many you know mediums and work with them there so um what the ministry of the diamond light does it's like a newer it's a, a newer approach it's a more modern approach where we include all those other things and all the other you know you're 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 able to have your belief system your spiritual belief system and follow your own path but we we provide like a you know a way um of understanding how to get there through mystical work through you know energy work diagnostic so you know when we were there I want to talk about this because I witnessed this <laughs> you know it's kind of like a powerful place to be because of all you were talking about you know the energy of spirit so much spirit was called and called and called and called and called in there in the instruction and the communities come there to receive messages from their loved ones that the place has it's it's what I call it charged you call it something else um, with this energy so the energy is heightened so it's already an environment um, for the mediums that that train there and work there to to have more access to this in, information so it's like I feel like you had a, a, a big breakthrough in your your trans mediumship and, and as a channel there and I wanted you to tell me like you know one of the experiences that you had which was highly evidential it was so accurate like the accurate even even now it's like the readings that you do there's, I'm very I'm very amazed <laughs> at the accuracy because I feel like you you are you've developed like your channel has opened and you've developed really like you're you're getting closer and closer to being direct channel 
And I just wanted you to share an experience that you had there. So for people that, you know, are training, it's like a, it's like a process. It's a process. It's an opening of yourself as well, if you want to do this work. So for me, uh, it was one of the most uh, life-changing moments. Uh, I met so many amazing, uh, gifted, unique, talented, multi-talented people there, mediums, psychics. And uh, one of the uh, readings that I was given through the mediumship uh, was a lady. Uh, as I already mentioned before, that I have a very uh, uh, huge uh, interest uh, in the energies that they are coming from the crystals and minerals. Which I want to ask you about that too after. Yes, and uh, so uh, I was given the reading to the lady. Uh, this uh, mediumship session was uh, where I basically started to see a, a small girl and her mother uh, on the kitchen and uh, that she was taking her uh, doll from her and she was leaving her alone and it was very extremely cold mother and I started to feel uh, in my body uh, that kind of cold and uh, through the feeling and uh, through the visuals and um, when uh, I already had a conversation with the lady from the audience and uh, I established the connection between her and mother spirit and uh, I, I was uh, going deeply into the trance and in that moment I had a conversation uh, with the lady so basically not me uh, the spirit had a conversation through me with the lady uh, and her mother was telling her that I'm terribly sorry for what I've done to you. I'm terribly sorry and I wish I could hug you right now. And you should always remember that um, I regret everything what I've uh, done to you. And uh, I love you. And I... Uh, hugging you with my wings right now as your angel and I always will be your angel and uh, after the session uh, the uh, lady uh, uh, thanked me for the reading she was extremely impressed everything was extremely accurate and she was uh, she had a pendant uh, of one of the crystals that I'm very attached to uh, that was a labradorite crystal and uh, so I think also that helped to build the connection between her and the spirit that was there because I have this connection to that kind of crystal and that's one of the most interesting uh, uh, mediumship sessions uh, that I experienced I had a lot of more of them but that's probably one of the most uh, uh, amazing memories because uh, here we can see how important is the work of the healers mediums and psychics because they can bring the message that uh, can um, change life and change the perspective of life prevent a lot of uh, life events in the future when we change our perspective uh, and when we get the information from the spirit and the love and everything what we uh, couldn't get before you know and uh, that's a great, that's what how the healing is uh, how we bring the healing well that's what i love about it and that's why i love doing the work as well and witnessing other like really good mediums doing doing the work because you know the evidence is important but the purpose is about healing and people being able to release these traumas they never would have before. And just to know, even, you know, people lose loved ones and it's, you know, we're the, you know, we're the ones that are, that are left. Um, and to see that they still go on and life goes on after that. That's like a spiritualist thing as well. It's like, 
you know, it gives us, it also gives us evidence that we're just not our physical bodies and that, that we're eternal. So, um, I thought that was important to say as well. And I forget the, the next thing that I, oh, the crystals. Yes, 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 yes. <laughs> so, um, you have a connection with Labrador, right? And would you say it helps, it helps you connect to those higher energies, like in trance? Like I know you, like you were, you know, even when you were there, you're like holding, here, here's a Labradorite crystal. And you were, you were going into trance, like with the crystal in your third eye. And, you know, talk about how crystals um, hold information and you can charge crystals and how they can, they can amplify um, your gifts or certain energies to help you. That's so many uh, questions. So a lot of questions. Know, yes. Okay. So let's start. I will scratch myself. So, uh, so the first question uh, will be about the Labradorite. So every healer energy healer and every uh, even person we have the, our own uh, minerals and the crystals that they are important for us in uh, present time in our present time and um, it can bring uh, us a lot of uh, i would say a lot of information because the crystals, they are very ancient. They, it's basically the time that is uh, the stays, and when they grow, they hold all the time. So we can read a lot from the past in those crystals. All, I would say also, uh, information from the genealogic tree also, uh, from our ancestors line, you know, and uh, we also can have the uh, um, we also can have the access to the ancient knowledge. and that's one of the stones of the ancient knowledge, the labradorite. And a lot of the crystals like uh, for example, like this one, no might, uh, it also has that uh, iridescent effect. You said you said the might. It says it, it, it's named uh, Numite. Numite. Yes. It also uh, one of the stones of the ancient knowledge. So those crystals, they help us to connect to that kind of information that already been lost in the ages. And we can, uh, we can just uh, bring this information in a present life time. Uh, that can be also very important for the humanity in general. And uh, I started from the. And what was the another question? Okay, so you kind of were, you were getting there. Um, it's like the frequency of this th this information, yes, information is held in these crystals. Yes. This knowledge from past. Um, so one of my things was it's like you know you said like the cards your the, or, the oracle cards yes they when you're working with them that information and the, the spirit energy whatever you want to call it um sort of gets infused in the cards uh, so if the healer the same way with crystals like if you work with you know your labradorite crystal um that it's going to pick up that information as well and be even more powerful tool for you. Yes, and uh, when the healer and spirit worker creates uh, his own oracle deck, he puts a lot of uh, his own uh, healing energy in that, uh, knowledge from the past generations and also his own connections to the spirit world that the other healers can use in their practice you know as a powerful instrument so uh, every healer needs to have his own decks that he works with and their own crystals and their crystals. own tools yes he has own tools and 
as more you trust yourself as more you learn about uh, psychic work as more you meet with the psychics and you uh, you found your own path you know that's the most important thing to follow your own path and in a spiritual work too and uh, that can bring the success uh, in all your uh, readings and the healing work uh, can bring more evidence and uh, uh, the most important to feel uh, to um, bring the need of the spirit because that's what the most important thing the need of the spirit it's actually what we need as a human than uh, what we want. Oh, so, um, you know, oh, this is the question that came up when you were talking. I was thinking about it. You know, to, I'm very, I'm very much in tune with what you're saying. But like, do you feel that it's important? Like when somebody, when somebody, when when somebody is drawn to a crystal, like there's an importance of, like, like you just random. Well, nothing's random, but it's like you. It should call you in some way, and you should really like kind of fall in love with this crystal. You might not know why, and then you know, do you do you feel that that crystal has information that that person needs in some way? it holds information it holds an, it holds certain energy so do you feel that it people holds, call, uh, call to them because their soul kind of knows that that crystal has something for them if they connect to the spirit if they feel the energies if they uh, not just like the stone you know just like a dial like people like, it's not like uh, oh that's oh that's really pretty <laughs> yes or uh, diamonds are forever you know well. so yes uh like all crystals are important on the earth and uh, if you really feel that uh crystal and you know why you have this crystal and uh that what the purpose of this crystal uh on your finger and uh, what it symbolizes, because every symbol also has the a lot of information it holds the information and uh, uh, this uh, crystal uh, is uh, then definitely uh, will help uh, in healing in uh, uh, say uh, finding your own uh, it will it will show you your uh, path in a different uh, spheres mm -hmm. of life also yeah. but if uh, as many people just read uh, the properties of those healing uh, crystals from the books it can be different it's not always accurate it's very individual and uh, every healer uh, needs to uh, pick uh, the crystals for every individual individual. Well, I mean, how I how I pick them is is from the feeling. Like I'll go somewhere where there's crystals, and I don't know, I don't have an agenda of what crystal I'm getting or anything like that. And something will just like really grab my attention, like even energetically too. And then I pick it up. And then it's like you get like whoa there's some there's something here like you'll know it it's not you know so like this crystal that i have here it's also a labradorite sphere yes yes so when i when i i was drawn to it and then when i actually held it it this is why i was also you know i'm talking about this because the information it had information in here that was for me and that's probably like i probably needed and i know i did once i got the information but when i when i held it i got a whole vision that really you know it was 
it was very mystical. <laughs> I won't go into the whole message, but it was it was very mystical, and it was it was you know something that really helped me in my work. So that's why I, I like I still have it. I come back to it, but it it there was like it's something that was stored in here that I was supposed to access. So I just wanted to add that because in you know, my case, in my case. I was seeing a lot of crystals uh, for certain reason, and then I started to meet people who actually had those crystals on them. <laughs> so right, you, you were you were seeing like yes. certain crystals, like a ring. It yes, like right. through the through the clairvoyance, I was seeing that, and then I started. When you met the person that had that. Yes, and uh, it's not only the crystals, it's also uh, like the clothes can be. So that's very interesting because that's all material objects that they hold the information. Like your books, you're saying the books. It's the books too. The books too. So yeah, I mean, for me, I just want to kind of like, you know, lean into that a little bit and, and say that we need to to allow ourselves to be more aware of the energy that certain objects um, hold and that they're important. And, you know, it's like clothing has someone's energetic signature on it. It's like you have to, you have to really um, vibe, <laughs> I hate using that word, but you're like, you have to you have to really you know harmonize with with the crystal the object with, with the thing that you have but when i you know when i first saw the crystal i didn't know why so you know people can you you might not know initially but then you have to hold it for a while like you know you might look like a weirdo in a crystal shop like holding a crystal for five minutes but they understand <laughs> certain crystals can increase the psychic abilities Mm -hmm. and uh, medium sheep and channeling other crystals also individual individual other and crystals some, and some don't work for other people or people yes. are not harming they can, so even they, make, they can also make you uh, weak yes depending on the person okay so we've i don't even know how long we've been speaking but it's been a, it's been a long time i can talk to you about you know this for days um, and sometimes we do talk a lot about this but I wanted to share a bit of your work um, with other people I want people to know how to get in contact with you um, and you know to get to you know even just ask you a question or like just to experience your work because it's very it's very different and you know you can would, what I'm getting at is also it's like and we're talking about this too like you said you got an image of something you didn't you weren't in front of a person in front of a client and then you got the, the crystal and then the person shows up later so there's a component to this work this completely works remotely too so you have clients like from all over the world that you do through zoom that you do readings through zoom and they're you know just as accurate as as when you have somebody in person so um i just wanted people to know that you're available you know on zoom online as well um, yes, people also can contact me everyone can contact me uh, through the um, uh, official site uh, ministry of the diamond and uh, through uh, my instagram page psychic signs and uh, this so page like psychic underscore science yeah psychic underscore science and uh also, you can't miss him his pictures are all <laughs> and also there is a link tree uh and uh, this link tree will uh, guide you to the site and with description all the services and uh, about my work i was uh which oracle cards also I work because I work with a, with a, I have like a, a hundreds of the oracle cards but right now I work with the 
20 decks yes 20 decks and uh, to bring uh, the important information because every deck uh, each each of the deck they have a uh, different kind of energies uh, and uh, you can uh, uh, working through those decks bring the important information to each sphere of the life yeah, before we go can we just talk about that a little bit but also i'm going to put I'm going to put the information that we're talking about for contacting, you know, him, um, you know, in all the, whatever you do online with the notes when we post, you know, this podcast episode. So it will make it easy for you. You don't have to wait. <laughs> you have to be like, oh my God, he's talking too fast. But anyway, you're talking about the, all the different decks um, that you've worked with in cumulative over the years and you work with, with 20 of them and that they're, they're different and they're for different purposes. So, which is why you work with, with about 20 of them. So can you just like quickly kind of explain like, you know, certain decks are for certain, certain types of issues or questions people might have and certain decks are for other things. So I like to work with the Oracle decks. Uh, they have their own unique symbolism and um, uh, like a Lenormand, I have a different version of the Lenerman. It's called Malefic Lenerman. It works with the difficulties, with the addictions, with uh, certain, people have. Yeah, certain type of uh, relationships. And uh, it can show uh, certain kind of uh, energy vibe for the certain uh, topic. And if I'm not getting anything, no information from this deck, it means everything is okay. So, because so, it's like you call them dark decks, right? Yes, I call them only dark because decks. it's about challenging. Yeah, like, that's stuff. probably that's what I would say. That's a ch challenge, challenging uh, uh, deck, not a dark deck because it's dark. And uh, I have also the. I don't mean dark, dark or bad. I just mean it's like. You know things that are hidden like things that we bury things yes, that hidden yes. challenges. that's what i mean by dark yes yes that's absolutely right um it helps bring it to light so you can process it yes i work with the angel cards i have a, a lot of uh, angel cards that can bring the message from the angels and uh, spirit guides um i work with the one of my favorite decks is the Los Angeles uh, Tarot that's also worked with the angels and uh, Siren's Melody that uh, I would call the magic deck because uh, it has a very um, extremely strong connection with my energy field and uh, with the artist uh, artwork and she was creating this deck she put uh, so much uh, magic in that and it's a very beautiful deck also uh, it really uh, can uh, clarify many life uh, events in the client's life yeah, and you use them based on what you're called to for that person and, and what they need you yes know, and, uh, um so it's one more thing i know this is long 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 and i said quick <laughs> i said quick but you know people that know me um so i'm actually gonna end it there i'm not gonna ask um because this will be even longer than than anyone would probably want to listen to it in one in one sitting thank you very much roberto for such an amazing conversation. Thanks everyone who was watching uh, me and Roberto. Uh, yeah, thank you too. Thank you for, you know, allowing me to, to, um, to pick your brain <laughs> about some of, about some of this stuff. Cause uh, you know, I really, it's, it's such a unique perspective, you know, I work with different mentors and and amazing ones, and I have I have to say that your perspective 
I haven't really seen before or heard about. So it it, it makes me it it makes me it challenges me to think in a different way outside of all those other perspectives that I know. And it it relates and there's overlap. Um, also, the technologies that I'm uh, using here and I'm certified in, uh, they are unique. Uh, they are first uh, in America. And uh, I always uh, also educating myself, doing research, uh, meeting scientists, sometimes connecting scientists uh, together uh, to do more psychic scientific work uh, that's that's my goal that's my mission here uh, also i'm doing like a psychic uh, intuitive uh, healing through the information and messages but also i'm doing the research that's what i was going to ask you about with the cards it's like you know there's there's the symbols there's the images and the stuff like that but you're you're intuitively tuning into that card and what it means. It's like that card could mean a different thing for like to nine different people could be meaning nine different things. Yes. yes. So I wanted to just add that that it's you know it's not just the cards that that the symbol of the card. It's your way of connecting. Yes. And getting the information. So I'm gonna let you go. <laughs> And just for everybody that's listening, like, like, you know, stay tuned. Some of these podcast episodes will be 30 minutes, 45 minutes. Sometimes they'll be longer. It just depends on what happens. We weren't planning on it being this long. And, you know, long is good. Lots of information. So, you know, stay tuned because we're going to bring a lot more subjects, a lot more topics from all kinds of just pretty much experts, like people that that work and are continually working in these um, Stay tuned. mystical fields, and and I want to bring that to you. I want I want people to to hear things that they might not have heard before. It might shift your perspective a little bit. It might make you think a little bit differently, and it might be it might inspire you. Say, hey, wait, yeah, I got that, but I I think that. It's, that it's more like that and that'll then you start researching and you start you know moving forward and you evolve and bring your perspectives out there so um we're building a community here and this podcast is meant for empowerment to empower people and give them tools and one tool you know is to work with you know advisors and if you want to develop those skills and you feel like you like it's you know your call to it then, you know, we train people doing that as well, but you have to find, um, what's the word, really, like, authentic people that are very deeply immersed in the work. Because there's a lot, you know, I'm not going to badmouth people, but like, you know, there's levels of, of people's knowledge and their connection to stuff. So finding someone really reputable is very important and to always follow your own intuition because you know a medium an advisor or a mentor or like somebody they can say something but it might not resonate with you and that's okay too you can say okay well all these things they said were were really accurate this one thing i don't know so just you know don't like you know you make your own decisions is what i'm saying it's like you, you know we're human we're all human. Yes. Everyone's human, so you know we can tune in as much as possible. But it's like you have to decide for yourself if this information is right for you. That's what I'm. That's what I'm trying to say. So that's the openness I think you know people should have with this kind of work and just work with people that are really authentic and and trust your gut. And if you know if someone's saying something negative, if there's like a message that's, that you know, there's things that are challenging. I don't mean that they can be brought up, but if if there's like some negativity to a message, that you know, if there's fear in there and whatever, spirit never, you know, they don't contact you. With yeah, that. always, not. always when I start the reading, I always go from the lowest to the highest. 
and that's how it's supposed to be you always bring in the healing you need to uh, hire the vibrations of the spirit and the uh, in the individual spirit you know that's what's what's important so messages i just want to like assure people that you know when it's coming from spirit because sometimes people be nervous about getting readings and contacting spirit heavens and stuff and and i you know it, there's the higher vibrational stuff that that really authentic reputable <laughs> psychics mediums and other people you know tune into is always meant for a positive purpose and and for healing so if it doesn't feel like that then maybe the the message the messenger um is just not as in tune with those higher energies that yeah. these pure messages of spirit that are positive to come through i just wanted to let people know that too yes of course okay so i'm now we're really going to sign off i'm going to let you go and thank you again for coming and thank you viewers if you made it to the end <laughs> to watch this there's there's more to come um we have a lot of a lot of offerings we're going to start to community things and online you know modernize more expansive spiritualist gatherings we need to do this online so it's more accessible to people we do it in person by the way we're located in fort lauderdale florida um for local people if you're in the area you know and you wanted to do something in person like for instance the energy bio the bioenergy diagnostic technology is something you have to be physically present for so um if you're local or whatever then come for that but all of our our other services even energy healing work and stuff like that we can we can do remotely as well but this is you know more about you Vladimir and I really appreciate Thank you. the work that you do and the the healthy skepticism and the amount of honesty and truth and authenticity I think I said that three times now that you have and that's that's what I look for in people that are going to be a mentor or an advisor and and I feel that that's important so I appreciate that very much about thank you Roberto thank you very much thank you everyone goodbye see you all bye bye bye